Continuing with the theme, uh, focus always on uh, conversation interfaces for good. So conversation interfaces are uh, interfaces that primarily allow us to converse. So it could be textual con con conversation, it could be voice-based conversation. It is just voice, voice, voice user interface. So anything that allows us to understand, uh, converse with other person in a more personal fashion. So that's the approach. But we have to, uh, and there are some applications where, where, where some instances where such applications are very useful. So we are trying to see uh, how they can be put to good use here. I have put Professor Dinesh Abhijayko. Uh, His primary focus is on accessibility and inclusion. So we have been doing a lot of work, as Mr. Alibon has also mentioned, we will talk about in this space, uh, use of uh, voice and voice, and as well as we are all seeing So uh, I thought that yeah, and Ms. Keju, uh, she's the founder of N-Smiles. N-Smiles primarily focuses on mental wellness. Uh, so over the last almost five years, uh, she has done wonderful work in that space. How uh, technology can play a role in addressing mental wellness and uh, her work uh, in the area of both, uh, has helped both school children, the college uh, of, uh, students, and also rescue children. So there are been significant work that she has put in that space. And how bots can play a role in uh, mental wellness space. And Supriya, uh, as founder of uh, Vision and Power. Uh, uh, Vision and Power is a company that, that focuses on uh, making education, STEM education, accessible for all. And uh, our work, uh, we also recently created the ISTEM hackathon, inclusive STEM hackathon, uh, uh, the last two years. We have doing a lot of work in this space, trying to switch to the ecosystem of players who can address this uh, larger issue. Uh, focus on uh, visually challenged you know? Then uh, I have uh, Mr. Pratik and Ms. Hanika from uh, Friends for Inclusion. Uh, Sankir is not here, he is uh, arranging and he is actually giving a conference in Delhi, uh, which is uh, organized by Microsoft, again focusing on accessibility space. So, we as a company have been doing a lot of work in the disability space. Um, in, the, in the past, also in the early adventures, also we have, been, uh, we have done work both in accessing accessibility, assessing accessibility of new physical infrastructure. Now their focus is on how they can help through technology, not only visually challenged, but also uh, hearing impact uh, with their solution. Uh, their, their, their current work is on sign language interpretation and also a bot for uh, visually challenged. Uh, and then uh, we have Mr. Rabu, uh, who is a co-founder of uh, Fibo Talk. FiboTalk is a, uh, a platform that helps us to produce bots. So we, we have a plug and play platform which enterprises, NGOs, organizations can effectively leverage and produce bots uh, in, 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 their, in their businesses. And uh, Mr. Subrata, founder of Super IT, they also have a their primary focus is on industry, uh, uh, what we call it service management, real time service management. Uh, so there is the concept of mobile workforce management. All the workflows that you have a room, you help them understand uh, the issues and then they effectively address the issues. So as part of that work, they also got bots um, which help the field force. So they will start talking about their uh, bot platform. So in terms of uh, the topic, right, conversation and uh, it's, it's fairly general, right? It, uh, it can be uh, unimodal text input, text output. It can be speech input, speech output. Uh, it can be uh, audio-visual input and uh, audio-visual uh, output, right? So, chatbot uh, has been, uh, what do you say, has been studied uh, for quite a bit of time. Uh, the only uh, recent uh, happenings has been uh, that there has been a lot of development in uh, speech recognition and natural language generation thanks to deep learning uh, based uh, techniques, right? And also a lot of uh, developments in language understanding where you say get the intent or domain and so on and then do the slot filling. So typically the dialogue management is a is a, a rule based system where you, you sort of get the intent and then uh, fill a slot and uh, create a sentence that is sort of a very usual pipeline. Sometimes people do uh, a little bit of fancy stuff in uh, this part, the dialogue manager part which could be form DB and so on. Uh, there is also a, a trend. So I put a reference in case somebody wants to uh, look at this. Right? 
and uh, there's also a trend to do everything uh, end to end, right? Uh, for those companies which have lots of data, Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, and so on, they have lots of uh, such data, right? So they try to uh, think about it from an end to end learning perspective, but then this needs really, really a lot of data, right? So this is one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, also, would like to mention that uh, from a different perspective, right? From a robotics perspective, uh, what has changed is from industrial robots which do not understand humans so much to robots which are particularly interested in physical navigation, we start to see uh, robots which want to do uh, conversation with uh, humans, right? Which is a which is a very pleasant uh, trend uh, in terms of having conversation with uh, humans, and uh, uh, and there has been a lot of uh, interesting works. One such work is by uh, Microsoft uh, Research where. You have, you're having an agent and you're having a conversation with, say, uh, multiple people. It can be one person, but it can also be with multiple people. And uh, if you look at uh, the overall architecture, right? Uh, so you have audio-visual sensors, you track people or look at uh, people, right? And also know what they are speaking, right? And then uh, you have to decide what to uh, speak back, right? That is a chatbot component, dialogue management. You also have to decide when to uh, nod, when to speak, uh, where to look, and so on. Right? There is an interesting multimodal input and a multimodal uh, output, right? So which makes things very interesting. And also, uh, based on uh, having having uh, chatted or interacted, you can also have lots of prior or learned uh, models as well. Right? With time, you can with experience, you can learn as well. Right? And uh, if somebody is interested, please do have. Look at this interesting robot from CMU, which is uh, Sara, it's called, right? Where a person is interacting with uh, Sara, right? There's only one person, but then you also have multi modal interaction. And what is interesting uh, about this is, uh, what do you say, Sara uh, looks at what the person is speaking, right? It, it also, uh, what do you say, does uh, non verbal analysis of the person whether they are interested, not interested, and so on. Uh, it also, uh, at every point, it decides what to do, right? It has to gesture, it has to nod, uh, and so on, right? So there is a uh, interesting uh, non-verbal synthesis that is happening on the uh, agent, right? And also it has some strategies, right? It's also interesting, so uh, maybe it went to sort of do a self-disclosure. Uh, uh, so my name is Sarah, and blah, 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 and so on, right? Uh, also, it can, it can think about various strategies, like maybe it want to be uh, polite or it want to have show a personality and so on, right? So uh, this is a very uh, interesting uh, thought process where how can you make a, a, a personality uh, of the agent, right? And what can be controlled and how you do it in a very seamless way so that uh, when, the, when the agent is talking, it's also doing uh, various other things, right? Looking at the person and so on, right? So multimodal input, multimodal output. Right? That's the sort of message they wanted to give. And I'll also show you a, a, a video from the lab uh, where what, what we are trying to do is uh, we are also trying to have an interaction agent. Right? Uh, so uh, she is going to talk to this person. And, uh, so he understands that this is a, this is, his name is Artham, right? Uh, the audio is not coming out of it. It's okay. So, uh, you will see what they are saying, right? Uh, and uh, the agent, with time, uh, you see uh, what we are trying to do is try to uh, teach this person few words in a new language, right? And uh, this is a interaction, right? And uh, you, 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 uh, the language learning is the goal, and you also see that there is multimodal input. You know who the person is, whether they are interested or not. When they come into the room, right? Maybe you have a language. Uh, learning room and uh, the agent, the person just comes and starts learning few words in a new language. Every time you can have multiple sessions and, and start learning few words and so on, right? Uh, and, and here you see that vision, speech, text, everything plays a role, and on the uh, agent also uh, uh, everything plays a role, right? What, uh, what gesture it has to do, what it has to speak, when it has to speak, uh, and so on, right? So, just a quick uh, illustration. So we have also been uh, looking at slightly more uh, general conversations. Right? For example, the person says, I'm not in a mood uh, today. Right? And then, uh, so we, he just keeps asking very random questions. Right? Do you have any friends? Uh, and so on. So it would be good if uh, we have the audio. Is there a way to fix the audio? 
No one's there. Are you? Okay, okay. Which is one looking for some data? Sorry? The which one? That was looking for some data. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, the audio will not work with it. Uh, I'm sorry, can I ask the question of the comments? Okay, okay. So here, uh, so without taking much of your time, right? So the agent is able to have uh, real-time uh, conversation, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, towards not just task-oriented discussion, but also something uh, something which is uh, which is uh, general as well. Okay. So this is from our lab. So bottom line is uh, we've been looking at uh, technologies. Uh, related to chatbot and also multimodal interaction, uh, right? And application language learning uh, being one of the application. So I'll let the uh, floor open and maybe also have one suggestion, maybe in terms of the order in which we could uh, start speaking, so they have some sort of a theme. So I first request uh, Sudrata followed by Rahul and then uh, Teju uh, followed by Prati Tanika and. Uh, so we'll start with different technology orientation and user and so on, and then move to accessibility uh, as an additional theme. Right? Uh, so let's get started. So uh, ours is a uh, enterprise service management platform, as I call it. Uh, it has got primarily two collaborative entities, and as Professor Dinesh was talking, like as we are moving more and more digital, the collaboration is happening either directly or indirectly. And therefore, the various kind of service needs of, of the organization such as any I will give a small example like what is a service? So, if you look at uh, any organization, they will have various operational components like customers, vendors, citizens, uh, machines, etc. etc. Each of these domains will have some kind of service needs. Like while they are working day in and day out, they will have some kind of issues in their operations in their running. Mean, so the question is, how do we identify what kind of issues coming in, if possible, in an automated manner, and then take a second step, uh, like preventing them from occurring, so sort of do a damage control, and then if that's not possible, at least help them to resolve right at the past time. So we have put up a patented technology-based framework called EPR, it's detection, prevention, and resolution, uh, using the technology pillars called uh, robotic process automation. We have got the conversational entities on the one hand, uh, the robots for human-based interaction, and I would take to call it an topic uh, for machine-based interaction. And then we use the data science technologies to analyze the thing and, and really identify the service issues and then uh, put it forward to a knowledge base to resolve those issues for these bots or the human-based interfaces. And if that's not possible, then the RPA engine works where we identify who are the service experts available within that organizational domain who can resolve those things. So uh, we were experimenting with a couple of uh, organizations. Uh, one of them is very interesting. Um, it's from Sweden, actually. So there are a lot of Asian people who are looking for some conversational interface to, um, to ask questions like related to tax or insurance, health and other stuff. I would like to have just one small flash demo from this where uh, we will show you that um, how they can talk to our uh, bot and then they get their answer. Interestingly, they wanted it in uh, multilingual mode, so along with English, some other languages were developed. And uh, from the business model perspective, I was talking to another Indian large engineering company um, where they are looking for. Um, Indian marketing work capability within the board. So that is something also we have developed. So in terms of uh, business model and process business we are asking, for us, um, it's like um, we need organization to identify their services from various domains, as I said, the customer, vendor, employees, IT applications, or citizen-centric services on the one hand. Or today, even the machines are becoming um, digital human, so they will also have a lot of needs. So we identify those needs using IoT-based interfaces, bring it to our platform. The platform is called iFix, and within the platform, then we help, help detecting those needs, uh, preventing those needs, and then resolving those needs. I'll pass on the details to my colleague, Uru, 
So we will just ask one question to Bob, which is rightly built into the mobile, and it will just answer in English for the time being, but there are two other non-lingual options are also available. We have uh, definitely questions on multilingual satellite, which is in India, not multilingual, that is in Canada and Hindi, other from English, but just for the sake of the time, I give one example of one question and let's see how the board that determines in this question and comes up with an answer. So, this will be in English. Do you have ambulance service available in the hospital? Logistics. 
which essentially generates so much information. Uh, but we were uh, looking to automate uh, a tracking process where there are two to three players involved. There is a creditor, there is a transporter, there is a storage. And uh, everyone is generating information into one system to another. And those systems are also essentially talking to each other. But integrating it all into a one workflow which gives the end user the exact location of where the package is right now is a uh, seemingly impossible task to build it in a generic purpose conversation. So uh, we figured that uh, uh, the conversations, uh, to, like general purpose conversations, are probably possible with, uh, with uh, uh, advanced libraries from Google, Amazon, or you know, open sources like Rasa. Uh, but building a, a business work case uh, workflow is extremely difficult, and it will require a hard degree of customization uh, hence, we thought that we focus on platform, which allows you to do as many things as you would like to do. And uh, then, in that process, we hope that we build enough data uh, for specific industries where we can probably come up with more generalized uh, solutions. Again, I don't foresee in, in at least the next 10 years or so that uh, there will be possibility of an entire uh, machine taking over a human conversation. So, we keep it open like, okay, that should be obvious. So this is that this this is basic philosophy on which uh, pivot of works. Uh, we we have just launched the product uh, last year and uh, we've done beta right now. And uh, we're working with few few people to ensure that we can do few workflows properly. And that's that from my side. I feel this is a very interesting space as such. Uh, because uh, there is a lot of it talked about, but most of it is about uh, I can identify an actor in a movie or I can identify a story that
complete assessment, uh, will I be able to give them some remediation activities? We should end up bring my behavior modification or uh, um, change in my habit breaking pattern. Uh, so those, those are the various areas we have integrated a small bit of chatbot. It is not as aggressive as two-way conversation. It is uh, at a one way. So the, the questionnaire is asked in a form or immediately uh, there is some kind of uh, a positive information that comes from the platform which encourages the user to complete because all these questionnaires can't be like a 10 question or 20 question because we are, uh, accuracy is important when we suggest that this habit has to be changed. Uh, and that's one of our, uh, nobody else in India is able to do what we are doing. That's one of our, probably we claim it as our brand. Because we boil down to this habit of yours in order of this priority, if you can modify, we will be able to change this attribute. For example, empathy, for example, listening. These are the attributes we talk about. And when we are able to tell that we need some kind of repetitive questions, psychometry always works in repetition. And the moment repetition comes, people who are like you guys who are a bit of on the higher mental capacity, they get bored. They will say that this is a repetitive question you don't want to answer, but they just take A, B, C, A, B, C. So that we, we can't give them uh, a very accurate analysis. That's why uh, chatbots have been very helpful for us. And we saw that uh, the moment we integrated a bit of positive quotations after 10 questions, 15 questions, with an instant result, it's really good. Uh, here your result is positive, this is moderate, or something along those lines. 90% um, started completing those assessments on completion. So otherwise, it used to be like one assessment is completed, two assessments are not completed. Always it used to be that status. Um, very good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kanika Jindal. I am trustee in uh, Friends for Inclusion, and uh, we are working in the field of technology. So, uh, with technology, we can uh, empower people with disabilities. And we are working with Triple ITB from uh, July 2018. So over to Pratik. Thank you, Kanika. Uh, just to add a little more from Friends for Inclusion point of view, we, as Ramesh gave us an introduction, truly believe technology can be a game changer. And that we want to put in action. As an organization, we believe that technology can empower, enable, and make people stand on their own feet. As part of our vision, we believe we want to empower persons with disabilities using technology. We have been focusing in three predominant areas. One is innovate, where we will focus on developing new technologies which will enable persons with disabilities. One of the fine examples is which Ramesh mentioned that we are working with IT to come work on a project called Signit, which will convert speech into sign language in a real-time manner. Second is, the second pillar of our focus is education, where we would want to create awareness, we would want to create an institution where everybody not only understands what is disability, what are the aspects related to it, but are also sensitized how I'm creating the technology. So we would like to promote the concept of universal design to all so that accessibility is just not a feel-good factor, it's a part of our institution. And last but not the least, we, the third track which we focus on is called Facilitate, which predominantly helps underprivileged students to get technology means so that they can continue with their education. In that, we have called Project Scholar, where we distribute laptops with screen readers so that they are able to not only continue with their education but live a life of dignity and independence. Today we are here to talk to you about a story. Any idea how many percent of the world has some form of the disability or the other? Any question, any thoughts, random numbers? Give a random number which you think. Two percent, three percent, ten percent, okay, anybody? Else? 15%? Okay. Anybody else? 
So gentlemen here was quite close. So as per the United Nations, there are 15% of the overall world population has some form of the disability or the other. So here I am to talk to you about a eighth biggest country in the world. Any idea what is the population of India? 1.3 billion folks we are. And if we take that percentage of 15 and try to equate it, how much it will come to be in India itself? 15% of 1.3 billion? Roughly 200 million folks, right? So, voila, that's the eighth biggest country in the world itself. So, we have over 200 people in, the world, in India itself who suffer one form of the disability or the other. However, these people at which such a big mass are still not being able to part of the mainstream society. Why? There are barriers. What kind of barriers exist for them? Attitudinal, technology, information. A lot of work has been done on techno attitudinal technology. There is has proved to be a game changer, but information is still remains an area for improvement for all of us. If information which they receive are pe uh, people are uninformed about it, the information they received are inadequate. They are fragmented. They are not relevant for people, or they are obsolete in nature which ultimately makes the entire mission fail. Even the Google Mighty, who is being the synonym for search in the web world, fails these folks because they did really do not have the right information for them. So here, as a part of Friends for Inclusion, we thought, why don't we combine technology and make it enable for persons with disability? Introducing Mera Mitra, which translate to be my friend, who will be our India's companion for all things on disability, which will not only help people to understand this, what are the different concepts relating to disability, what are the laws, but also what are the local information which they have. We are, the next slide we'll have, we have show, showcased a couple of screenshots, how it is going to look like. It's a voice-based chatbot. Where are we currently available? Google Mera Mitra would be available everywhere. At this point of time, we are available at Google Assistant in your smartphones. It is available on Facebook Messenger. Plus, over the period of time, we plan to be there in WhatsApp, Twitter, and also Alexa. So, what are we waiting for? Let's have a small sneak peek on Mera Mitra. Can we have the video, please? We will be anyways present for the demo tomorrow, but we thought the small sneak peek will really help. Information is the key to empowerment. However, millions of people with disabilities in India don't have access to it. Information is inadequate, inaccessible, and obsolete. To bridge this information gap, we at Friends for Inclusion have built a solution, introducing Mira Mitra. And India has companion for all things on disability. It uses artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing. Here you can find information on concepts related to disability. Assistive technologies is the umbrella term used to refer to products, systems, and services used by people with disabilities to maintain or improve their functioning and independence. Legislative framework. Alright, Section 28 of RPWD Act talks about research and development, policies, schemes, and penalties. Penalties. You may ask me to tell you about the punishment for crime against a disabled person or penalties mentioned Mental Health Care Act or about punishment. Much more. Indiranagar General Hospital is the nearest place to get your medical certificate need. Available on your favorite platform, Google Assistant, Facebook Messenger, and coming soon on WhatsApp, Twitter, and Alexa. So what are you waiting for? Talk to Mira Mitra. All right, let's get Mira Mitra.
So guys, that's Mera Mitra for you. And in the due course of time, we are getting Mera Mitra in Hindi as well. So that's about it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. So next, uh, we go to uh, Supriya. Yeah. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Pratik. You set the stage for rework in as well. Uh, so as many of you have already uh, met me earlier and know what Vision Empire is working on, I'll just introduce very briefly what we do. We work in the field of making uh, STEM education accessible for visually impaired children. Now, just now Pratik has uh, shown you how uh, the need for universal design, the need for making technologies accessible, the need for assistive technologies. Now the need for assistive technologies is because today we are a technology driven society and in a technology driven society you have technologies which are inaccessible. Because they are inaccessible you need a bunch of assistive technologies bots and other voice-based interfaces are some of them. Now Vision Empire, when it uh, was formed about a year and a half back, decided to not plunge into uh, creating a portfolio of technologies. We decided to first go and find out why the schools were facing the problems that they are facing today. Why don't we have accessible technologies in the first place? We've been making technologies for decades, but why don't we have accessible technologies when we know that 15% of the world is, falls under the bracket of disability, why don't we have accessible technologies? What does universal design mean? It means that we don't have the inputs to create accessible technologies. It was never a requirement when we created technologies to even think that are they inclusive or not, right? And that's why we don't have accessible technologies. So um, now if you are to create an accessible technology, therefore you need inputs from people who are facing these challenges to know what they need. And then you can create what what you want to create, right? So that it's inclusive. Now, if, if you want a person to be able to give you inputs on a technology to make it accessible for him or her, that person has to be knowledgeable about that particular domain, field, to be able to give you inputs. Now, that person to be knowledgeable about bots, to be knowledgeable about all the various technologies that we use today, has to be first trained in science and math to even understand what that technology, how that technology should be built. What are the design inputs? What's the design pers uh, thinking perspective that needs to come in? We have a country here where we have in this state 45 schools for the blind and there's only one school which takes science and math up to class 10. The rest of the schools stop science and math at class 7. How do you expect design inputs from them for such high-tech objects, right? So coming to what we do therefore is we are trying to address this problem at the root. We are trying to say, let's try and find out what, is the what are the challenges at school and try to address those. Now, if you ask me, when I first went to school two years back, and uh, of course I've been working with them for the last four years, uh, it was very clear that if I have to give them a technology, then I have to give them a technology which helps the current pedagogical processes. Right, And which means it's about the student's learning process, it's about the teacher's method of teaching, it's about the creation of books, it's about other technologies which can help them to assimilate what they are learning, help them to reinforce the learning, and help the teacher to be able to disseminate this knowledge better. Now comes the largest question. You're talking of teachers to, to be able to you know, fit into this process. When you go to the schools and you find who's teaching science and math, 
Seventy percent of the teachers are themselves visually impaired and have not studied science and math. So how would they teach science and math? So this is where the technology is coming. Having uh, looked into this problem a little bit more deeper, we conducted about you know five design of uh, five experiments which we designed. Other than more than hundred plus interviews across various institutions and various bodies, and what we finally decided with is a portfolio of five or six technologies which would be assisting the other programs which we launched. So some of the programs which we launched, uh, one is called uh, Anubhav, which is basically the experiential learning program. So we create the Braille books for science and math, which was non-existent until last year. And we, cr we uh, to, to actually create the books, we created a process. We created a process with the help of uh, our students here and uh, some of our colleagues. We created a process with which we can standardize the content in the book so that it would be inclusive. So once you have the process, you need some technology to be able to manage that process. So that's one part of the technology. And then to be able to disseminate the experiential learning, we needed to create some technologies. One of them is the learning management system. Now the learn, like I told you, they didn't even have content, so we had to create content. And when we created the content, we realized that you have to scale it up and you have to make it available to everybody, not just available, the keyword accessible to everybody. So we had to uh, actually, we spent a lot of time researching various uh, you know, needs that the technology needs that are to be met to make a system accessible and eventually designed a learning management system which we call Subodha, which is now uh, deployed at Sri Ramana Maharishi School for the Blind. That particular uh, learning management system is accessible right now to the visually impaired students and teachers we've been testing it out and while it is it, it's not a, um, a, a bot interface but at the same time uh, the open edX platform which we have based it on lets us uh, you know provide voice input and output that is in the, in the sense that it actually grades what the child uh, input gives input to and it, it gives back audio output now this has actually really excited our children last week we got a letter from uh, Sri Ramana Maharishi uh, Academy for the Blind and the children have raved about it that they are hearing somebody talk to them so this really uh, is one kind of voice interface, you know, which is showing a positive uh, outcome. The other thing is when we went to uh, do the research is to understand when, uh, how the children uh, learn, right? Like uh, we would expect that because a person is not able to uh, see the blackboard or see the picture on the book, therefore you give them a braille book and you give them a tactile diagram and they touch the diagram and that's it, you're done. Right. So we actually conducted some experiments in class. We took some diagrams to the class and we told them, okay, you know, this is how it is, so touch it. This is one fourth, this is half, this is this. The experiment was so revealing because there was one child in the class who is very sharp. Any problem I gave her till before I introduced the tactile, she would answer it like that. She would just know the answer. She'd give it to me, okay? The minute I gave her the tactile, and you won't believe I was so, <laughs> you know, disappointed at my own experiment, she just stopped answering. She just shut up. She would not answer anything. So when I asked her, Lakshmi, what happened to you? You're not able to uh, understand this tactile? She would not answer there also. She was so, uh, you know, she just closed in on me because she, she thought she was, a this is something alien that I've given her. She's so used to just audio kind of uh, interface where the person talks doesn't matter who somebody is talking to her and telling her and she's learning on the fly she doesn't have to go back and read a book back home she doesn't have to do homework she lives in the hostel where without her parents but she's able to do it right so then we realized that we really needed to come up with a, an interface which is both tactile and audio and therefore we designed a technology which is an audio labeled diagram kit which basically come which will enable through touch both audio as well as give them the uh, tactile input so this is how our technologies are being shaped i think i'll stop now and let you
So uh, in the interest of time, I think uh, now we are really behind schedule. So I have some questions to ask to the panelists, but I thought maybe in the interest of larger participation, uh, if somebody has a question uh, to one of the panelists, please uh, go ahead and ask. Uh, if not, I also have a couple of questions. Please go ahead, yeah. If somebody wants to ask any particular question broadly in the area of um, interaction, right? Uh, that's what it is about, interaction uh, involving uh, uh, an agent or making sure everybody has access and everybody can interact, right? Uh, so that is sort of the larger theme. Yeah? A group in uh, outside India, uh, but concerning the elderly. So I, I was quite uh, curious, maybe, you know, Sweden may be a different sort of a, uh, but the elderly typically in our country we see as not technology friendly and bots would be very sort of alien to them. But I, I'd like to actually hear a little bit more of your experiences and what feedback you got from that particular deployment. Right, thanks. So that's really an experience and experimentation. Uh, see, the use case was like this. Uh, in that country, elderly people are very, very alone. And in terms of their um, technology savviness, they are slightly better than India. Of course, Sweden is one of the nicest country with uh, zero corruption and all the, the, the government's social security areas are quite strong. So uh, people are very, uh, they are curious to know, can I have one device with me? So they say, okay, mobile is the only device with me, nothing else. I don't have anyone to talk to, so at least the mobile should help me to answer all of my questions. So it starts with my um, health insurance details, my tax details, municipality details, you know, all those things basically. Many times they, they have this uh, government-based uh, postal um, services which takes care of a lot of their transportation, I mean, transportation of the goods and the various consumables. So they would like to know where do I go to pick those up, kind of, at what point of time they would like to be there. Because these guys are uh, maybe at times they are alone, so they, and being a cold country, they cannot just wait outside for a long hour. So they go in a particular time, pick up the parcel and come back. So small, small items, but they have seen, they have told us, uh, if we can, if I can have one single interface for answering me, whatever is the case, uh, that's what th we are looking for. Okay, good. Any other question? I just would like to know which all Indian languages as the, the conversational interface is working right now and uh, at what level? One large... Uh, engineering and construction company. We are under NDA, so I am not able to disclose. The POC has been successful. We are just formalizing the commercials. Uh, we are talking to SAP as well. Um, so Rupa will talk a bit more in detail. So interestingly, you know, SAP is an ERP technology, and most of the Indian companies, good or bad, have gone into SAP. There, there is one very unique request came to us. Can, I, can we have SAP support in multiple Indian languages? I'm, I'm talking now a bit more uh, business with a touch of elements of uh, human uh, respect, you know, because when SAP as a technology is deployed into production soft floor, and we have seen uh, some of the um, uh, working category employees are not at all tech savvy. I mean, all they can do is uh, ask a question in their own dialect, and they are looking for a mechanism to answer them uh, what to be done. Possibly the next step what they are asking us is once we are telling them what to be done uh, and once they are uh, going through the maturity curve of uh, knowing that, the next step would be please do it for me kind of thing. So do you think uh, say uh, when, when say students or somebody who wants to have a conversation, right? Uh, so you think uh, sometimes do they feel more comfortable to talk to an agent than a human? Does that happen? Uh, and uh, uh, any thoughts on that? Uh? Actually, uh, after we do that assessment, uh, it is a roadmap feature on the pilot, sir. Uh, when once we this every hour a, a student commits suicide, especially in this uh, exam season, uh, especially who are uh, writing uh, K set, M set, uh, NEET, JE, this kind of 
kids. So what we wanted to launch is a bot which is two-way. Uh, we have in the assessment report, we already have given them all the techniques. Uh, say for example, you have lack of concentration because of which you have distraction. Uh, we have given them ABC, but now we wanted to develop that. Uh, and we just did one small uh, thing like a pilot. And people are, students are wanting to use that more in terms of uh, free download in even um, and uh, we don't have enough expertise to build the two way yet that's where i i wanted to help ask sure, for their sure. help but then even that itself is they wanted to use so it there is a lot of interest there is in lot of uh, uh, they want to use it yes yes so uh, remediation is what they're looking for I firstly see. detection i see uh, and that is like they want it to be more engaged and more personalized and more anonymous. Sure. That's where chatbots are really functional. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, see, um, if I come there as a student's helping assistant, looking at my hair color, my age and all those things, there is a, it's not a feeling of fear, but there is a uh, distance gets created between the person receiving the service and and, I, and me who is providing the service in the digital world what she is talking about i think some of those elements are eliminated so that fear of unknown is yes. not there and so that people might open up a exactly that makes it much more closure you know yes. so that's what i have seen has has got a much more acceptability than uh, being a human sure being, yeah. sure Sure. That's the challenge. Yeah. 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 So Rahul, I have one question. Uh, so in terms of uh, technology, uh, so are we, are we at a rule-based uh, chatbots only or what has been, is there anything uh, in terms of data learning that has sort of creeped into the systems, the conversations? See, generally, I think uh, for general purpose conversations, I think uh, the problem is more or less sorted out. Mm -hmm. uh, the big four or five companies which are uh, work dealing with uh, mass consumer communication already, take mm -hmm. example of Google or um, Amazon or uh, Microsoft. These guys have uh, Facebook, they have all, they've got so much access to general conversation uh, data that exactly. general conversation flow is more or less sorted out. Yes. Uh, where we face problem is that uh, when when people expect the same level of uh, expertise or performance in an industry specific uh, solutioning, take example of banking. Banking has generated a lot of information already. But you go to most of the banking uh, chatbots that they have implemented as are primarily based on, uh, you know, click of the button. It is, it is. I think it is a new way of a navigation system, rule based. Yes. I, I, I won't even call them rule based because they are just uh, fancy it's HTML it, inside yeah. a chat interface. Correct. Yes. And uh, as far as NLP is concerned, so NLP is something that is uh, very mature, I guess. And uh, with uh, open source technologies like Rasa, I think they are democratizing it also very well. Uh, but understanding intent, as you showed in your graphics, that understanding intent is only half the part. Correct. Uh, what to do with that intention Correct. and whether I have enough knowledge base to respond to it. Correct. Those are still rule based. Uh, most of the time, if you look at uh, primarily uh, uh, the, the self uh, creating bots, like the bot creation interfaces that you see, primarily they say that you define an intention mm -hmm. and you define the output that you want to give. Uh, that part, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, scope for improvement or, you know, as, as data will creep in, more things will happen. I think the problem is that uh, the biggest of the organization who are dealing with the industry-specific data or, uh, you know, business vertical-specific uh, information have not yet, uh, you know, got into that much uh, data that they can create uh, general purpose conversations out of it. So I think that's the scope which I think a lot of people can pick up on. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. So any questions to... Pratik, Kanika, or Supriya uh, in the accessibility space, yes? Hi. Uh, actually, uh, we are uh, learning to become, like, technology is our domain, and we are building web apps and all. So uh, with your experiences in uh, accessibility space uh, domain, uh, like, this is a new uh, idea for us that even if we are building a web page or something like that, it has to be much more accessible. So what all are the points that, while developing that app, that we have to keep in our mind? 
so those kind of guidelines uh, like uh, I, I, i just want to know where i can get those kind of informations is something like that already provided by you or someone else uh, or else i suggest that you can have it there so that people who are creating such web apps already know that these kind of things has to be handled which will help in the uh, help in solving the problem from the root itself so that's a good question so to uh, i'll answer your question in couple of parts firstly there are defined guidelines called vcag you know web content accessibility guidelines which are available for websites apps which people are developing so people can follow that particular apps and uh, and to be honest it is more of you know to following a particular steps and it is not rocket science when you are coming coming up an accessibility app it is more of an intent on a, whether we they want to they consider that target audience as a for that particular segment of group as a target audience or not so you know uh, whether whether today accessibility is a question for all of us and that's where you know we keep promoting people to adopt a concept of universal design uh, which supri also mentioned so if you developed an app which is you know only a person or, or i should say call it a non disabled person can use it 15% of the overall world population will not be even be able to use that particular app so you know a couple of things which i can advise you is definitely read up on universal design vcag is a ready reference for any technology developer to come up with applications which are accessible in nature plus uh, i will put a so, so legal aspect to this also there was a rpwd act which was formalized and passed in december 2016 which uh, you know directs all the public private organizations to make all the infrastructure maybe physical or you know i should say electronic infrastructure to be accessible by 2022 so today it's an option by 2022 it has to be a reality otherwise there will be penalties from the government if they are not able to do that we are running out of time so we'll stop here thanks for the discussion everybody it was a very uh, very nice discussion yeah thanks